it's truly a pleasure to join you again for this closing forum. I'm sure from what I've just heard that you have had fruitful discussions with your colleagues over the past few days. And I congratulate you on the successful launch of the Commonwealth Youth Gender and Equality Network. Unfortunately, Commonwealth member states attract their fair share of criticism when it comes to equality. This often relates to the realities of gender equality and policies that concern the rights of LGBTIQ communities. In the run-up to the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow last year, there was much debate on the credentials of Commonwealth member states and the position on LGBTIQ rights. The disturbing statistic that an estimated four out of five Commonwealth countries criminalized homosexuality came to the fore. And there was increased pressure for the Commonwealth to do more to support lesbian, gay, transsexual, bisexual, intersex, and queer persons. We must do what we can to ensure that citizens are not discriminated against, no matter the place of the birth. However, things are certainly improving. I was overjoyed to read the Secretary General of the Commonwealth's recent statement issued for the International Day Against Homophobia, Transphobia and Biphobia that we observe today. The statement recognizes the universal rights of all citizens of the Commonwealth as a shared birthright and calls for member states to come together in exploring ways of celebrating and safeguarding diversity and inclusion in our societies. The Commonwealth Charter springs from such notions of inclusion, equality, and human rights. In fact, achieving true equality is crucial. Without equality, the eradication of poverty, of discrimination, of the root causes of gender violence will not be possible. Without equality, we cannot build resilient societies and economies. Without equality, we cannot encourage sustainable development and prosperity for all. Equality is a vital foundation of human rights. This may be obvious to us gathered here today because we have each made the choice to do what we can to make positive changes in the world. But the reality in many countries around the globe is not so positive. Women, girls, and gender minorities in particular continue to face challenges, especially in terms of access to health, education, and economic opportunity. Commonwealth countries, like many other countries around the world, have a long way to go in this respect. In today's Commonwealth, millions of children are denied education because of their gender identity. Therefore, we must prioritize access to gender inclusive quality education with a relevant curriculum which highlights universal learning methods and prepares young people to achieve full and productive employment. This will not only empower young people, but also enable them to effectively engage with important life transitions and become successful and active citizens of the Commonwealth. It is by entering into dialogue with one another that we can most authentically discover the diverse realities experienced by people whose lives are often hidden and whose voices are ignored. Such work is being done by my Foundation for the Wellbeing of Society here in Malta. All our efforts must be informed by consultation at the grassroots level and must be encouraged to flourish. My Foundation provides a safe space where ideas, experiences and concerns around a range of topics can be freely discussed. The, the Foundation works in close collaboration with civil society, government entities and stakeholders and welcomes initiatives such as this forum and the launching of this essential network. It is up to you to see that the network lives up to its potential. When true gender equality is achieved, people of all genders will be able to go to school and have the opportunity to prosper and experience well-being. True gender equality will offer us the opportunity to enjoy the same employment rights with equal pay and conditions. 
Only then will we be in a position to reach our development goals and benefit as one human family from global prosperity. This is why your efforts over the past days on the launching of the Commonwealth Youth Gender and Equality Network are so important. They signal a change in the way we talk about gender and the underlying structures that enforce rigid and co coercive categories to the detriment of so many people. Your efforts will provide opportunities across the Commonwealth and beyond so that sustainable solutions may be identified, explored and implemented. I commend the excellent work you have done as participants and by the Royal Commonwealth Society for organizing and facilitate, facilitating this forum. As I encourage you during the opening, I urge you all to remain involved and connected through this network. I urge you to approach civil society in your countries and inform them about this network and about the work you have done. Civil society has an important critical role in bringing specific concerns and situations to the fore. And I commend you for your bold resolve to engage in much needed advocacy and see that necessary changes are made. I trust that you shall find continuing support from the Royal Commonwealth Society and that the Commonwealth Foundation shall acknowledge and nurture this initiative. In conclusion, I hope you have had a productive stay in Malta, full of constructive debates with colleagues. You have now become friends. Thank you for choosing to come here and express solidarity with one another as citizens of the Commonwealth. We must teach in our own ways and in our own lives contribute to the great work of social justice. We must find viable solutions for the future, global solutions to global problems and discover how best to secure harmonious transformations in our nations, in our communities, and in our lives. I sincerely wish you all great success and enjoyable morning when you'll be visiting also Verdala Palace. Thank you.